Hi, I'm DJ and I'm going to show you how to put together a Wahoo boat tray. This particular model is a 4.5 tonne with a 3.5 tonne axle set, which is great for a big boat that's not as heavy. But the process of putting this together is the same, so let's get started. With the Wahoo boat trailers, all the fabrication has been done, so really it's a matter of bolting it together. Uh, some of the tools you're going to need are sockets and the long reach sockets make it a lot easier. Using the impact wrench also makes it much, much quicker. So it's certainly uh, a good idea to have one of these. Uh, or you can just use a normal uh, ratchet, but it is a slower process. Uh, so you just need uh, your normal spanners, screwdrivers, uh, a set square to help set up the uh, axles so it's uh, all straight and correct. Uh, the other item which is a little out of the ordinary is a torque wrench uh, because you need to do the right settings on the splice plate bolts and also the axle mounts. Uh, also you'll need a pop rivet gun and the most common spanners are a 18 mil open ender and ring spanner and same with a 19 mil. They're the spanners that we use the most. Let's get started. As you can see, we've got all our components for the trailer set out. Um, and we'll go through them as we start to build the trailer. But the first thing we need to do is put the wheels on the axles. You can probably see the fire from where you are. Once you've got your wheels on, it's important to orientate your axles correctly. In this instance, the rear of the trailer is facing that way, and it's important to have your torsion arm trailing rear also. So there are four mounting holes on the rear section one, uh, two on the inside, two on the outside and we use the 8.8 .8 class bolt, galvanised, uh, 48 millimetre. And you need to have a washer on the top and also a washer uh, between the I-beam and the nut. So once you've got your rail on and your bolts in place, you just need to nip up one bolt on the inside. And if you use your set square, uh, put it on the axle, you can line up the rail and you can just bump it into place so it's nice and square. Once you're happy you've got it square with the axle, you then nip up the other inside bolt. Uh, and then check again that it's square. Once you're happy it's square, you can then do the same on the other side. So once you've got both rail square, you can check it by going either side of the axle uh, and making sure it's within 2-3 to three mil. And then it's time to bolt in the next axle. Once you're happy with your second axle and remembering that your torsion arm has to be trailing rear, you can then tighten up all your bolts and you need to tighten it to 88 newton metres of torque. And then it's time to bolt on section 2. So when you're ready to fit section 2 rail, it's not a bad idea to use some props at the right level. It just makes it really easy to put the splice plates on. So once you've got your section 2 rail set up, uh, you're ready to put on your angled splice plates. Uh, so this is the top um, and bottom splice plate. Uh, we also have the web splice plates which go inside there and you've got inner and outer splice plates as well so we're going to put them on now. So once you've got your splice plate on top and your bolts in place with your washers uh, you're ready to fit your inner splice plate and you put it on like that and you have your nylock nuts in place like that. And you just continue that on with all of them. So once you've got your web plate on the top and your bolts in uh, and your nuts done up loosely, you can put on your web plate. There's one that goes on the inside and on the outside. 
So once you've got your rib plates in place and your bolts done up loosely, you can put on your bottom splice plate with your inner splice plate. Once you've got your splice plates on and your bolts in place, you need to push the rails together so you close that gap and then nip your bolts up. Once you've done that, you can start on the other side and put the section two rail on. Down, down, baby. Starting right here, right so once you've got section two rails in place and fitted, you can fit then your section three. And on the right side of your uh, section three rail, remember you have the uh, brake pump mount. So you will, be, you will have three holes here and just remember to have that on the right side. With the section three, you're going to be using the straight splice plates. And you'll have the same number of plates as the angle splice plates, except they're all straight. Uh, so you've got your top and bottom splice plates, you have your web splice plates, and your inner and outer. And so we're going to fit them up now in the same way as we fitted the section two splice plates. So once you've got section three rails in place, and the bolts done up, you can torque them to 88 Newton meters. And then after that, we can put on the drawbar. So once you've got section three rails tightened up, uh, you can fit your drawbar. And as you can see, we've just got some props there holding it in place, which makes it a little easier. And you're gonna use the wedge spaces to connect the drawbar through the I-beams at the front here. And as you can see, there's two either side. You put them together, they make a perfect rectangle. If you get them wrong, they don't. So that's how you know you got it right. A perfect rectangle, and they go either side of the i beam like that. This will give you a perpendicular joint all the way through, uh, and creates a nice strong connection. So as you can see, we've got our wedge spaces, and you've got the rectangle, and they're both sitting either side of your eye beam web. Uh, and that creates the true joint, and you can just push your bolt through. So once you've got your bolt partially through, you can do the other side with your other two wedge spaces. Again, you've got your rectangle there, and they sit either side of your eye beam like so, and then you can push your bolt all the way through, and then you do your second bolt. Once you've got both of your 16mm bolts through your uh, drawbar connection at the front, you can just do the bolts up loosely, uh, and then it's time to put on your angle cross member, which connects to the rear of your drawbar, just like that, and then that bolts up to section 3 rails. So once you've got your drawbar in place, you can tighten up your U-bolts there uh, before tightening up the apex. Uh, and then you can tighten up the two bolts either side for the angle drawbar. So once you've got your drawbar all tightened up, it's then time to put on your coupler. And in this case, it's the 70 mil because uh, it's uh, a four and a half ton rated trailer. Um, and your safety chain brackets which go either side of your drawbar, and there's two bolts that go all the way through, and you just tighten them up. So we're just gonna finish tightening that up and then move to the next section. So once you've completed your drawbar assembly, you can then start holding up for your cross members. Uh, we've got the shorter one at the front here, uh, and there's two longer ones that go each side of your axles. And the trick with these is the front uh, cross member here, has a larger hole for your white clearance light. And then with the four and a half ton, you've got an extra cross member, uh, which is the same width as your rails, and that goes to the rear. So we're gonna to start to bolt that up now, and we'll show you how it's done. So we're now gonna fit up all the cross members, and we count them from the rear, one, two, three, four. Uh, so, in the cross member that goes in front of your uh, wheel here, remembering that it's the one with the larger hole for your white clearance light, you need to get equal distance on both sides, on this side and on that side, 
because um, that's what you're going to connect your guards to. Uh, now, you've got to be using 100mm U-bolts, and in your pack there it will say cross mill U-bolts. Uh, and if you're using your rattle gun, you're going to need a flexible connector or a knuckle joint to get inside of your eye beam. So an easy way to fit your cross members is to actually hang your new bolts to start with and then you can just slip your cross member in. Once you've got it even, you can tighten it up and it's in position and done. With your cross member new bolts, you may find they are a little snug. Uh, if that is the case, you can just uh, give them a bit of a spread with a couple of pieces of pipe and that will fix the problem. So once you've got all your cross members bolted in place and tightened up, you can then go ahead and torque up your angle splice plates now that everything is in place to 88 newton meters. So the next step is to fit your tail light brackets and you have a left hand and right hand tail light bracket. And the right hand tail light bracket you can tell has got two small holes in the bottom corners for your number plate. Uh, and you fit them facing towards the outside and you'll have two 10mm bolts to hold it in place. through the blinds I saw you Silhouette, you're gonna be high. Now we're fitting up our wheel guards, and you're going to be using the M10 by 100 bolts, and you're going to have a washer on both ends, on the head end and on the nut end. Uh, the height of your wheel guard can be adjusted by adding in a different hole setting. Um, but basically, you want the head of the, the bolt to the outside. Because it looks better. So once you've got your mud guards fitted and tightened up, you need to put your mud flaps on the back, and it actually looks better to have them bolted to the inside of your guard with the head of the bolt to the outside. Once you've got that done, it's then time to put in your wiring harness. Once you've got your guards and mud flaps fitted, you can then go ahead and put the lighting in, uh, and this is what you'll get in your lighting pack. Uh, you'll have your rear lights, and there's a left hand and right hand one. Your right hand has your number plate light at the bottom there, and they all come with uh, plugs. Uh, it's a triple seal plug, uh, which will plug straight into your harness. You also have your side lights, and you'll have red amber, uh, and they'll go in along the sides of your rails. They also have your plugs at the back. And you want the red facing rear, amber facing forward. Uh, also, you have your reflectors. Uh, you'll have a white reflector and amber reflector. Your white flipping reflector goes on the front of your cross member, in front of your, uh, your wheel there. And the ambers go intermittently along the rail. And we'll show you how to do that in a minute. So we're just fitting our right hand side uh, rear lights. Uh, and the plug goes through the main hole on your light bracket. Um, and you have two, two stainless uh, bolts on the light. And you'll see they just uh, go straight through the pre drilled holes and it comes with a washer nut that fits to the back. And then just bring it around and that'll clip into your harness. So when you're putting in your side lights, you'll see that there are three different types. Uh, the first type is the tail with 200 mil, and there's four of those. You've got two each side, which uh, attach to your rails. And then you've got a uh, side light, red amber, uh, with a 500 mil tail, and they attach to your uh, wheel guards. Uh, you also have a white clearance light, which will attached to your front cross member. So we're just fitting the uh, side lights, and again remember have the uh, red facing rear, uh, amber forward, uh, two bolts 
through there is a rubber backing. You can just push that through to the pre drilled holes, uh, nuts on the rear, and tighten them up. So, once you've got your base plate uh, fitted and tightened, you can just push through your plug. Remember, amber goes to the front, and then we'll just clip in like that. So we're just putting in the white clearance light, which connects to your forward cross member. And you want to put the base plate in first. It is a little tricky to be able to get the screws in there, but if you use a ring spanner, uh, you can do it. It just might take a little bit of time. Uh, alternatively, you can use a pop rivet if you're having too much trouble. So once you've got the base plate on, the screws are up tight, you need to push your cable through that hole and out the uh, side here. And then you need a pull wire from the other access hole on the other side of the rail to be able to attach it to the pull wire and pull that through. So the side light for your wheel guards is the red amber one with the 500 mil tail. And once you've got your base plate fitted, tightened up, you can push through your plug. And of course, red goes to the rear, amber to the front. And then it'll snap in. So once you've fitted all your lights, it's time to roll out your harness. Uh, and there's two harnesses. There's a left hand and a right hand. The left hand harness is actually a little bit longer because it crosses over at, on the forward section. Um, so we're going to start doing that now. And you can see there, they've got plugs. And they'll all plug into each one of your lights. So once you've got your harnesses rolled out, both on the left and the right, and you've matched up your plugs, you can then go ahead and plug in all your lights. Uh, there's, there's no wrong way of putting it in because it will only go on one way. But you'll notice at the front there, there's two arrows. You match those two arrows up. Make sure you've got all three seals on your plug and it pays to just maybe lubricate that with a spear tool or water or whatever you've got. Because once you plug them in, it's very difficult to unplug them. So, once you've got it lined up, you can just go ahead and plug it in. And you just go down the line, plugging in all your lights. So the second plug from the rear of your trailer will uh, be plugging into the side light of your guard. And you just need to push the plug through your rail and into the side light plug under the guard. Like, like that. And later we'll be P-clamping it to the inside of that guard and securing from the other side. So once you've got all your lights plugged in, you need to secure it to the rail. And to do that, you need to run the hydraulic line first because they clamp together. So you've got one main hydraulic line that runs down the right side of your trailer and connects to your brake pump at the front uh, and you need to connect the one end of the line to your brakes and we'll talk to you about that later uh, with a little bit of a, a curve up and then you need to p-clamp both your electric harness and your hydraulic line together with your p-clamp and pop rivet and you just pop rivet on so this is your pre-wired brake unit uh, it comes with your plug that goes to your car and also you have an emergency breakaway uh, system with battery backup. This unit bolts to the forward section right side using three bolts here and we're going to go ahead and bolt that in and then we're going to plug in your electrics. Once you've got your brake pump uh, connected up and bolted in you need to uh, plug in your wiring harness and you've got the left side and the right side which plugs in to your uh, brake pump, pump leads and you want to just uh, lightly connect them up because uh, you need to check your indicator lights are correct. So once you uh, plug them in lightly you can then plug some power into it from your car and check your indicator lights on your car are corresponding with left and right to your trailer. 
If they are, that's great. If not, you just need to swap them around so they correspond. Once you've completed your harness connections and hydraulic line connections, you can then go ahead and tidy up the tails with the uh, top cable ties that we supply. You can just tidy them up, make them neat, so they're not going to flop around. Once you've completed hooking up all your lights, you then have to uh, place reflectors uh, down the side of both sides of the trailer, and you'll have a white reflector, which goes in the front um, of the guard there, and you've got amber reflectors. Now the amber reflectors, you'll have the first one about within a metre of uh, the rear end. To fit the reflector, it's got a sticky back, so you just pull off the top and place it nice and even in the centre of the eye beam, like that. So that's within a metre. The next amber reflector will go on the side of the guard and uh, again pull the back off. Uh, put it perhaps just below your light, like that. And then you'll have one white reflector which can go just in front of the crossbeam to the right of your white clearance light. From the amber reflector on your guard, they just go every three metres, or you can just put them alongside your side lighting. One there, and perhaps one up here. And then you just do the same on the other side. So once you've primed your hydraulic system, you can then put in your boat support setup. So in this case, we've got three metre uh, bunks, rear bunks, and you'll have uh, bunk brackets here. You'll have two L brackets either side, um, which you can set up with your U box. And on the bottom hole, you put through your bolt, which the bunk sits on. So you can set that up, slot it in, and once you've got it in position, um, and you, you know exactly where you're going to put your boat in relation to your trailer and your, your weight distribution. You can then drill a hole straight through the bunk and put a bolt through and that secures it so it's not going to go anywhere. So then you're on to the um, bow support. Uh, and in this case, we're just showing you how to put on the, what we call the Y support. Um, it's basically a clamp with two U-bolts and it just slots in there and it's an adjustable setup. So if you want the height there, then you clamp it up at that height. With your bunk support, you have a number of adjustments to suit your boat. Uh, you can adjust the height of, uh, of your boat by adjusting your bunks um, wider or narrower. Uh, that also allows you to be able to uh, pick uh, either side of the time that uh, suits your style of hull. But you also have an independent uh, height adjustment by adjusting the lower bolt to another hole setting. Uh, and that will allow you to be able to choose the width at which these uh, are set and also independently the height. You may actually have bow boards on your boat trailer. And if you do, you'll have four of these posts and they actually uh, get attached to your third and fourth cross member with your bow boards going uh, lengthways along there. They simply um, have a uh, clamp like this, which you use U-bolts to clamp your posts on each side, one there, one there, and uh, on the other side as well. Uh, and then you clamp that up and your bow board attaches to your swivel. So the next step is to put on your winch post, and this is the uh, heavy duty winch post with a four and a half tonne, uh, and it can be placed anywhere on the drawbar, either on the outside of the apex or on the inside of the apex. It gives you about a, a metre of adjustment depending on the size of your boat. So once you've chosen the spot uh, for your winch post, you just use your U-bolts to bolt to your drawbar. Uh, you can use two U-bolts or three if you feel it's necessary. And the positioning, obviously, of the uh, winch post 
allows you to better balance your weight of your boat across your axles. So that's, uh, it may take a little bit of time just to get the, the balance right. Once you've got your winch post set, you can just bolt in your, uh, your winch. This is a 1500 kilo winch and you use two bolts down the center and just bolt it to your winch plate. Uh, you've got your handle, which you can set up here. If it doesn't go missing, you'll be lucky. Once you've bolted in your, all your cross members, you can then fit your jockey wheel using the two 120mm uh, wide U-bolts. Now that you've fully completed your Wahoo boat trailer, it's time to take it to a local inspection centre and then hit the wheel. It was like a movie scene And that light boy, he looked so sweet Burned down like a cigarette You're gone